in this section of the video we'll be focusing primarily on all the configuration that we have to do on the SQL side um, so we'll be primarily making sure that we have our TNS name uh, set up uh, we will also check on the SQL net file uh, see if everything's okay over there uh, we will take a look at our registry entries to make sure it's pointing to the correct uh, TNS file TNS name file um, and um, after that we will um, also do some testing to make sure that the connections goes through uh, by doing a TNS ping um, and then we will go ahead and uh, set up the connection so one of the first things that I always do is open up the command prompt and this is on the SQL server and I do uh, two TNS pings um, so first TNS ping I do is to just directly the Oracle server I put in the Oracle server name which in this case is Oracle 11 G R 2 um, and so I can see that um, the TNS ping has gone through and it has been successful that is it is okay um, this tells me a lot of things it, it tells me that I can communicate to the Oracle server um, I can I'm just testing the Oracle server right now so I can communicate to the Oracle server and I have no firewall issues whatsoever um, so that's a very good test um, now also by doing that we've noticed a couple of things um, if you remember in the previous video, I have got two clients, Oracle clients installed on this machine, the 32-bit and the 64-bit. But by the TNS ping, I can say, I can tell which one is the uh, primary one which is used by the server. And in this case, it is the client 2. Um, it also tells me the IP address and the port number um, of the connection which is going through. Um, so this, this is a very successful test. So in the next step, let's go ahead and look at the um, oracle net dot ORA file and by default um, it will be uh, in the same location that you just saw so over here it's in the app administrator product 11.2.0 client 2 um, you know so on and so forth so that's exactly where I'm going right now it's in the app administrator product 11.2 client 2 it's in the network And it's in the admin and that's where the uh, the SQL ORA file is so um, the SQL ORA file uh, by default in this case already has um, my um, TNS names and Z and Z connect and, and basically the directory path and it also shows your uh, SQL authentication service um, if yours for some reason does not have this information um, then you need to at least go ahead and make sure you have, have the TNS names. Um, there is instances where you you will have these parentheses and it will only have the Z, easy connect. Go ahead and add this uh, TNS name as well. Um, so that takes care of the oracle net.ora. Um, the next thing is the TNS names.ora. Um, there's two places these files can be located. You can put them in the net admin folder. Uh, sometimes you can you will also see this in the instant client folder um, it is completely fine to put it over there as long as you make the correct registry and the environment variable uh, for the sake of simplicity I keep mine in the um, uh, in the network admin folder that way I can see both of them um, in the same place um, so what I the, the TNS names dot ORA wasn't available on the server it's something that I had to build so basically I just went ahead and created a word file um, saved it as TNS names .ORA, and, and the spelling is is very specific so create the TNS names .ORA, and um, and then you go ahead and put in this entry uh, this is very specific um, and so what happens is you need to put in the, the way I put it is the name of actually the name of my Oracle server Oracle database and the specific table that I'm going through uh, going to pull give you the name put in the name of the Oracle server port number um, and then the service name the service name can be whatever you like um, just put it something that makes sense um, and I always try to keep some relations where the service name is actually the name of the database that I'm trying to hit so and now we've successfully put in the TNS name uh, we've also got the um, the SQL net.ora um, so the next thing we need to do now is take a look at our registry setting and then the environment so let's start by the registry setting type in reg edit and open that up 
So in the reg edit registry, I'm in the local machine, software, Oracle. Um, and initially when you come in, you will not see a TNS admin uh, entry over here. This is something that you have to put it in. Um, and what this does is it specifically tells um, the connection that I want you to get the TNS connection from client two. Um, and the client two is where I have my 64 bit ODBC driver coming from. Um, and so it's pretty simple. You just go ahead in your article, right click on that new, and this is a string value. Um, so when you put that in, um, make sure that you put in the exact value name and the spelling has to be uh, accurate. And then go ahead and put in um, the, uh, the location of the folder. And the folder is the exact same uh, place where the uh, Oracle net and the TNS name was. So we've put that in over here, we've gone ahead and uh, closed it and that's our registry entry so the last thing we need to do is now put in the environment variables um, the environment variable on 20 on our server 2012 is basically you click on the server manager go to local server click on your computer name and it'll give you the system properties um, go on click on the advanced tab and click on environment variables um, over here in the system variable we are going to add um, another entry and this is the one that we've added so let me edit for you the variable name again is very specific it has to be uppercase um, and TNS underscore admin and the variable value is again the same location of the folder um, which is the client to network admin um, so now that we've got all these uh, prerequisites which are which are absolutely needed, uh, what we can do is go ahead and do a quick test to make sure that all our settings are correct. Um, and so let's open up the command prompt again. And this time we are going to put in a TNS ping and ping the information that we put in on our um, um, on our file over there. So it's a, which in this case was uh, books dot emp um, so if you recall uh, let's go back to that place c app administrator product it's client to network admin yep in the tns names dot um, this is the one that we did the tns ping on and it has successfully worked because now we are able to get an okay or successful connection to the Oracle server specifically for that um, um, that database. Um, so it, it took the correct port number, um, it hit the correct server, and it even uh, hit the correct um, database that we need. So um, the connection is successful. Now as a test, I'm going to open the SQL developer application and this comes with your um, the ODBC driver that you installed but it only comes with the 32-bit that's the whole, whole reason why I installed it um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the connection first through the Oracle SQL developer to make sure that I can connect to that database and table and view the table so I'm going to go to connections right click new connection um, I'm going to give the connection name something that makes sense. So in this case, I'm just calling it article books. Um, the next information we need is the username and password. So in this case, I'm just using a username, which is called as HR, um, and I'm putting in the password. Now, in your case, you will have to use whichever username and password you have available as long as those passwords that account has access to the database and the tables you're trying to hit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Connection type is the TNS one. That's the whole setup we did before. Um, and so now if your setup is correct, under network alias, you will see your, um, your TNS connection. Um, so it pulled up, which is exactly the same connection that we put over here in our TNS names, the exact same one. Um, so we've got that and now I'm going to test it and the test was successful so let's go ahead and connect to it it's connecting I see that a connection has been built there let me go ahead and expand it 
Yep, that's the tables. Um, and I'm going to use the employees table for this uh, scenario. So let me just go ahead and open it. And this is all my data. This is the data which is in this table, which is in the Oracle database. Um, so we've gone ahead and at least successfully proved a few things that the firewalls on both the Oracle and our SQL server is good, um, that the uh, TNS name connection is correct, um, and we've got our ODBC drivers working successfully. So all of that works. Um, so now let's take it to the next level, which is um, setting up this connection on the SQL side. So I'm going to fire up my uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Log in. Um, it's under Server Objects, Linked Servers, and I'm going to expand this provider. If your 64-bit driver was not installed, or for some reason it wasn't installed successfully, you would not see this. So um, that's why it's the first thing that you want to come and check. Um, also, once we are in here, um, I want to open it, and by default, none of these will be checked. Um, for a successful connection, you need to have the dynamic parameter checked, enabled, and also the allow in process enabled. So we've gone ahead and done that successfully, and now we're going to make the connection. So let's go ahead on our linked servers, right click, new linked server, and uh, I'm going to again put in a name that makes sense. Uh, it's Oracle Books is what I'm going to put here. Um, select the Oracle provider for OLEDB. The product name has to be Oracle. Data source. The data source is going to be the same name as I've put over here on my TNS names.org file. So I'm going to put in the books.emp. So that's everything on the general side. Um, on the security side, um, you need to put in the account that has access to that um, database. Now, prior to doing this, if we went into the Oracle SQL Developer, we used a uh, account, and that's the same account I'm going to use here, um, whose username was HR, and then there was a password. All right, um, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Uh, if any error would happen, you would see it over here, and I'll, and I'll talk about those errors at the end of the article. Uh, but since nothing happened, um, I see that the linked server has been created successfully. Uh, but just to confirm success, we want to go ahead and take a look at our tables. It's actually got a link to the SQL server, so depending on where your SQL server is located, uh, it, it does take a while for the tables to expand, uh, but we do have our information over here. And yes, we do see the um, HR employees, um, the table that we want. So this is a connection that's actually coming in from your Oracle side. Um, now, finally, what we need to do is build a dummy database, and we want to create a view, and that view is pulling the information from this um, specific table. So that's that's the one step we're going to do on the Oracle side. So let's create a new database, and I'm going to call that again. Give it a name, which is Oracle Books. Um, go ahead and did that. By default, it shows up on the bottom there. Um, so I'll leave this over here for now as it is, uh, because I want to create the view. And an easy way without any code is I go into HR, right click script table as insert select to and I'm going to create this op new query editor window um, and the beauty of SQL Studio is when you, when you go through that process it actually builds the query for you and that's what it's doing right now Now, for some reason, you've got duplicate information coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this ex excess information that we have. And this is also a good time to, you know, pick the t uh, basically the uh, columns that you want, because any of this you may not need. 
but this is what we want so I'm gonna go ahead and ex ex execute it just to make sure all the information is there okay it's good and just go ahead and copy this query over and now let's go to our Oracle database I mean our Oracle books um, database that we built I'm going to go into view right click new view And another tab will open up soon um, all right so it's it's asking if there's anything I want to pull I'm gonna say no but this is where I go ahead and paste that query we just copied um, and let's go ahead and execute and there you go it went ahead and pulled all the information you didn't have to figure out any of this it's all without any code um, and it was successful so I'm gonna go ahead and save this view and let's call this as the um, let's call it as the books view. So now when I close this, do you want to save this query? No. Uh, if I just right click and refresh, I should see my new view. Um, if I go over here and say select top one thousand, it shows the um, the query as well as it shows the name. So we now have a full connection from both the Oracle to SQL and now we've got a um, connection made directly to SQL database. Now that the database exists over here and we've got a view, SharePoint will recognize that. And that's the next uh, step we'll cover in the video is to go ahead and make the connection to this database. Thanks.